Praise the Lord. Good evening. Welcome to Berea's Bible study. Um, thank God for another opportunity in this day in this house. We just thank God for all the faithful uh, members in the body of Christ and, of course, our Berea's family. Uh, we're praying for you today, hoping you are remaining safe. Give honor to our pastor, uh, Bishop Renzi Abram, Assistant Pastor Michael Boyd, and all the many great saints of Berea. Uh, we just welcome you today, and uh, as we uh, partake a little bit of the bread of life, uh, thanking God for all our many blessings. Um, uh, today we're going to be in the book of Second Peter, Second uh, Peter, the first chapter, and we're going to talk a little bit about the, the ladder of faith, uh, the ladder of faith. I better just hold this here. The ladder of faith. And, and, and what it means, it's uh, really a, a, a term that we have uh, prescribed to uh, the first chapter uh, of Peter, verses 4 through 11. And one of my favorite epistles, uh, there's a lot to be said about Brother Peter and his great writing to us. So we thank God for that. As always, uh, we just want to begin with a word of prayer. So if you bow your head, we'll pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another day in, our, in your house. We thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for all your many blessings, Lord. We thank you for your Holy Spirit, and we thank you for your word today. We thank you for all our five senses work and our faculties of work today. We thank you for food and raiment. For such, we give you thanks and we give you honor today. We give you glory for an opportunity to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, to, to break the bread of life, and to make your word plain today. Uh, where we cannot see, show us, Lord Jesus. And when we, where we have not heard, we ask that you would speak a word to us that we might understand. Uh, we ask for your spirit and your favor here today. In Jesus' name, amen. 1 Peter 4, 1 through, uh, 1 Peter, 2 Peter, I'm sorry, 2 Peter 1, 4 through 11. And we'll read those and we'll get right into it. If that's all right with you. Uh, and I've read through it a couple times here, and I, I think that uh, sometimes the, the, the ESV or the NIV gives me a better understanding. Uh, but when it doesn't, I just go with the King James Version because I think that's what most of us are used to. Uh, a little more familiar with it. So, so when I read through the little bit of this, I, I didn't see a lot that was going to bless me by reading from the NIV. So I think I'll just read... Um, 4 through 11, 2 Peter, the first chapter, 4 through 11. I'll just read it from the King James Version. And it reads, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. Uh, if you're at home, just say that to you. Precious promises. That by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. Uh, for if these things be in you and me, and they abound, they make you that you are neither barren nor unfruitful, in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, I'll read that verse again. If these things be in you and abound, they make they shall make that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, verse 9 reads, But he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten uh, that he was purged from his old sin. Lord, may you ask a blessing to the reading and understanding of the word. Uh, I want to talk just a few minutes um, about uh, what I consider to be the ladder of faith. Uh, I think many uh, preachers and teachers have taught on the ladder of faith out of 2 Peter. Uh, the Bible is a compendium of 66 books, uh, 39 Old Testament books, and, and 27 New Testament books. And, and those numbers do not fall uh, by chance. 39 is, is, the, is the Jewish number for infirmity or weakness, if you recall. 
um, uh, Jesus took 39 stripes. The Apostle Paul, the primary writer of the New Testament, said he took 39 lashes. Uh, in, the, in the Hebrew, it, it means lamed teth, or, or infirmity, or weakness. And, and we know the Old Testament uh, uh, to be a revealer of our weakness. Uh, of a man's weakness. If you go back to the law and you start reading through the Ten Commandments, it doesn't take you long to realize you're a lawbreaker, that, that I'm a lawbreaker. So, so, so it wants us to see our weakness and our inability to uphold the righteousness of God. And we see that through the Old Testament. We see creation, uh, which so many doubt today, but it's there. Creation, we see the history of God's people. Uh, we see, of course, the wisdom books, and, and uh, we see the prophets, uh, the writings also. So those are things we see in the Old Testament, 27 books in the New Testament. Uh, that's the number for gospel ministry. Uh, uh, if we look into a little bit of the etymology, uh, in, in Numbers, 26 is the power of salvation. 27 is the gospel ministry, and you can't do gospel ministry without the power of salvation. And that requires, of course, the Holy Spirit. But nevertheless, the Bible comes forth and it shows us where we're at, who we are, and what we ought to be, what God has made us, what God has done for us. And in Peter's epistle, I like it because like the Apostle Paul, he always lays out the indicative before the imperative. And I say that over and over again, is that he, before he asks and calls you to do anything, he lays out what God has already done. So, so that you understand that uh, what you're doing is not on your own strength. It's not me trying to become something, it's me uh, uh, being who I already am in Christ. You know, he's writing to believers. And today, uh, I hope to touch the lives of some believers here today. Uh, when I say ladder of faith, I want to debunk a few things. Uh, mainly, that, that I'm not trying to say that there's a way uh, to climb up to God on your own effort. Uh, it's not a self-righteous ladder. Um, there's no intellectual path to God. A lot of times people I know who, who don't really understand salvation or grace, who haven't had the salvation experience, who have not come to a knowledge of Jesus Christ, uh, they will quote Beatitudes uh, as, a, as a strength uh, of their assurance of heaven. And they'll go on, blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are the merciful. And they'll say, I know I've got heaven to look forward to because I've done these things. Uh, but there is no intellectual path to God, and, and there's no uh, path to God uh, by being self-righteous, okay? So it doesn't matter how merciful you are, and I appreciate that you're merciful. That won't get you there. What Jesus was doing in the Sermon on the Mount was redefining uh, values. Uh, blessed are the poor in spirit. Well, I don't want to be poor. Well, well Jesus lets you know uh, that he's describing people who are in a state of grace, and who have been changed by God's grace. And, and that blessed, of course, means happy. These people are happy despite what they went through, and these things are producing in them something far greater. So, so I just want to dispel the idea that, that we're actually, I'm teaching a lesson uh, on, that I might be teaching a lesson on, on how you're going to get to heaven on your own. That's not what I'm doing. Okay, that's not what I'm doing. Uh, Paul addresses the intellectual brass that they are are up. Arapagas, uh, the outcropping in Acropolis in Athens, remember, on Mars Hill, uh, when they had uh, built so many different uh, parts of their culture around the Greek gods. And he lets them know you that you have shrines to, to every god and, and false god, but I just want you to know that the god that made the world and everything in it does not dwell in a temple, neither can we hold him, uh, because in him we live and move and have our being. Okay, uh, belief in deity, believing in God, is not faith. Uh, that's one ground we want to set forth, that, that simply believing that there is a God is not faith. Uh, a lot of people have an intellectual knowledge. They, they have a sense to the fact that their God exists. But that does not equate to faith, nor does it equate to salvation. Uh, James says this, he says, you claim to have faith, and I have works. Uh, show me your faith uh, without works, 
and I will show you my faith with works. Basically, he's saying that, that the two uh, do not need reconcile. Uh, your moral life and, and, and trying to figure out what you need to do good or ought to be doing well and, and applying to your Christian life is not run opposite of God's grace. They, they're friends. Spurgeon says you don't have to reconcile friends. Uh, if we're friends, we don't need to try to figure nothing out. We're, we're friends. These things work together, and we'll talk about that as we walk through Peter. Okay? Um, he says, goes on to say that the, even the demons believe, and they just shudder, or they just tremble. He, he said, but he said, he goes on to say, but are you willing to recognize that you are a foolish or, or spiritually shallow person uh, that faith without works is, is useless. And that's really what we want to talk about. Uh, a, a Christian life, a life, a person who said they have salvation, and this came about because someone has spoken to me and said, oh, I'm not sure why I stand. Well, the assurance of heaven is in the Word of God, and we see that insurance here. Uh, what do I need to do to make my election sure? Uh, how do I keep from vacillating back and forth? One day I feel like that I, I, I'm in trouble. The next day I feel like I'm okay. Uh, this preacher says that and this preacher says that. And, and, and it seems like I'm just a uh, shit tossed.